Welcome to the Inspired Action Podcast. This is where we have motivational, inspiring conversations and interviews that we hope you'll enjoy listening to. Join us and other inspired actioneers on this alchemical, transformational journey. Welcome back to the Inspired Action Podcast. This is pod number 82. My name is Jay and I'm with my host, as always, Lita Herman. Welcome back, everyone. What are we talking about today, Lita? We're talking about the immortality mindset. Wow, that's really good. That's about living to live or are you living to die? It's exactly. a big topic. It might take a while to get through this one. Yes. All about immortality. Well, we wanted to continue this discussion along on our last podcast, pod 81, We talked about the fear of dying or the fear of death or the fearing death and dying. And about changing your mind. Changing your mind. We're going to go on with that because we had this thing, the revolution in your own mind, challenging your belief systems, taking that fear of dying and put it to a positivity of life. There you go. Positivity of life. There you go. So so today, an ally. Yes. Not a weapon of fear. Exactly. Fear is your friend. Oh, I like that. Yes. Fear of dying. The Grim Reaper. <laughs> BFF, right? BFF. That's the ultimate BFF. <laughs> the ultimate. Forever BFF. Forever. That's right. <laughs> okay. So let's go. Today's topic, the idea of immortality or the never ending cycle of birth and death. Yes. Birth and death. Birth and death for a millennia. Yes. Yikes. So. The immortality, the immortality mindset. Are you living to live or living to die? Sounds like a rejected title of a James Bond movie. Dun, 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 dun. Are you living to live or living to die? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. There you go. All right, so let's get a little bit serious here. We have quite a bit to go through on this one. Yes, not uh, too serious, Jay. Well, I'll try not to. <laughs> All right, so we know Jay's never that serious. What? All right. I am well, so not serious. No, no, never. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I'm a little too serious. Well, anyway. Never. All right. Okay, so the birth-death cycle. Let's start right there because this is one you just can't fight. Yes. You can't change reality. Well, yeah. maybe a little bit, but can but you outsmart it? Can you outsmart it? Because, you know, first of all, if you can totally accept that fact that there's a birth and death cycle, then there's more promise and how this is going to play out. So it's kind of like a surfer riding a 30-foot wave for a seemingly impossible amount of time, which it really seems like it when you go to the really big waves. watch those videos, it's like, oh, and it's just building and building and building. And then they come out of that little hole. Yeah. For them, it's probably a lifetime. Yeah, they don't they don't succumb to it and they don't try to defeat it. They don't try to be stronger than the wave. Yeah, they can't mu- you can't muscle your way through yeah, that. Yeah, they don't try to change the wave. They fit into the wave's direction. They merge with that giant wave. And I also feel like they match energetically. They get yes. into sync vibrationally. Yes. They are one with the wave. Yes. That's kind of corny, but they are one with the wave. They totally are. They just ride the crest of it and they travel through this time and space. Yeah. So how can we think about that concept with the cycle of birth and death and what is truly living? Well, it's that present moment. If you are riding that wave and you are in that instant and you're not thinking about what you're going to get at the grocery store. Right. Or where did you leave your car keys? Guess what? You will wipe out. (laughs) Or what's for lunch. (laughs) Or what's for lunch. Okay. It's about a face plant into that wave if you start going in that direction. Exactly. So we've talked a few times about being in the zone, uh, the Wu way. They are in the Wu way. You're surfing that wave. You know, you see Laird Hamilton on those crazy things out there. He is the Wu way master. He's the Wu way master. So he's an alchemist. And what do the alchemists really mean when they use the word immortality? Yeah, let's get him on the podcast when we start doing our modern day alchemists. Laird, we're coming for you. We yeah, want to talk to you. We're coming for you. We That's want to great. pick your brain on the Wu Wei of those giant waves. Well, we have so many more questions, but before we get to that, we should just kind of go over some things that we... Uh, I was just starting to get into yeah, it, but you you're, get right, into you're it. right. All right, let's go. <laughs> to get more of this outside of this one episode, you can go to inspiredactionpodcast.com. We have episodes up there. We have a new little merch store. We've gotten so many requests for t-shirts and mugs and hats that we joke about all the time. So go there if you want to buy one, that'd be great. We also have extra, you know, bonuses that come with each episode, things that we talk about, maybe downloads. Like in the last episode, we had a download of a meditation that we did in our book launch. Yes, but if you're walking or running or driving, do not do the meditation. <laughs> yes, right. Wait till you get to a safe spot. Please. We always need the disclaimer. <laughs> Even though we're, you know, fear of dying and immortality, we don't want to 
<laughs> accelerate that process right. through bad podcasting. Right. So, um, and then you can also go to the alchemylearningcenter.com, which is our big hub. You know, we have online classes, guided medication, med- medications. No, no we wow, do not guided, guided for medication. Boy, I got Gu- some of those guided <laughs> medications. <laughs> Take this now. Beep. <laughs> Take this now. Beep. <laughs> no, guided meditations. We do meditation Mondays coming soon. Uh, we do a lot of cool weekly live events. Wu Wei Wednesday. And we also have some advanced five element components as well. Yes. And those live events are really a lot of fun. You know, Jay and I like to have fun, as you know, from this podcast. And we just want to chat with people live. So it's a Zoom session. It's, it's your, it's, it's how we can get to be closer with you and develop a community. This this Alchemy Learning Center is really about a community of alchemists who can share thoughts and experiences together so that we don't feel alone because it's kind of weird stuff. We're kind of a little bit out there. And, you know, by being out there, <laughs> do, 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 we're out there. I think it's really the new in there. It's I just, this. <laughs> it's, it's just, it, it is a different experience to yes. do alchemy. And so it's nice to do it with friends. So go check it out, alchemylearningcenter.com. Yes. So it's again, alchemylearningcenter.com. Check us out. Or you can always go to the inspiredactionpodcast.com because we are also there. And you can just also find us just about anywhere. We're hanging out all the time and we're always looking for new ideas. So let's get back to uh, what we're talking about today, which is the I word. The I word. <laughs> which is not the F word <laughs> or, or the, the L, L word. word. If you have any lesbians out there, this is the I word. This is immortality. It's not about living forever. It's about living right now in the moment. It's yes. the life that you're currently living. And that's pretty much where it is. Yes. So we've talked about practicing letting go or sitting and forgetting. There, there's a meditation called sitting and forgetting, or we call it the letting go meditation on that we did on several of the podcasts in the first season. So if you haven't done that before, you can go back and look at that. In fact, we can wait. Yeah. Forever. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and also, you should be Forever. working that into your self cultivation of doing that every day. That's okay. I'm always a little slower than Jay. Yeah, I'll see if I have this one right here. <laughs> okay, she can't hear the sound effects, so I'm just going at it here. Okay, I'm going to do that again. Okay, she she doesn't have headphones. She refuses to wear headphones. So I'm listening on the sound effects there. But anyways, it was kind of funny. We're all laughing. All right. So my question is, what if every day you live the life you truly wanted? You lived, you laughed, and you loved the way you wanted. And then every night you let it all go. The good and the bad. Yes. And you went to sleep like that was it, the end, like game over. You fell asleep. And if you wake up in the morning... Wow, fantastic, great. You get to do it all over again. But, you know, is that is that what truly living is really about? Well, maybe. You know, what if, you know, you're not in alignment with your life and it's bad or you think it's bad. Remember, no good, no bad, no right or wrong. But for you, if you're not in alignment, you maybe think that you're unhealthy or you're not with the right person or you're not living in the right house or the right location or the right job. And so you have to go that day after day, the old groundhog effect there. Uh, which is a great movie, by the way. Yeah. And so, and which is very high up there if you look yeah. at it from a metaphysical standpoint, the very. Groundhog Day. And so, if you keep doing that over and over, that's up for you to decide. Is that the life you want to live? Are you creating a life that you want to live? Or are you just going through the motions and just ticking a coy at the clock, you know, every year? Click, click, another year. I yeah. Know. Are you using up your life, yeah. basically? Well, it's all about nourishing and growing in your life on an ongoing basis instead of depleting and using up your life force. Well, we are a lot of consumers here. Yes. We are and, major consumers. Yes. In fact, I think human beings are ultimately consumers, even though we use that word to sort of describe the actual purchase of things, but we consume constantly. That's what we do. Ultimately, we're not sustainable as human beings. We can go about the whole consumer of media and social media and all these things. We're like products and, you know, yeah. We're like Pac-Man on crack. We are. I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> waka, 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 we all are? the time. We just consume, consume, consume. We are pack men and pack women. I could yes. right, just, just Or say. one of those giant whales that just opens their mouth and soups up, kind of like sweeps yes. up, I don't know, what do they call it? They just... 
Yes. What do they, what do they call it when they open their mouth? They just suck it all in like all the millions of and krill. stuff like that. Yeah. Well, we are, you know, actually destructive. All we do is eat and stomp our way through okay, the world. Okay, that's like Godzilla for sure. <laughs> On a rampage through the media yes, world, yes. anti-social media world, or even through the natural world. Boy, we're just kind of the natural world for sure. We're destroying use, our planet. We you know? use up things. We devour things. Yeah, definitely. Like Godzilla. You know, it never stops. Think of all the devastation and destruction the human race has caused on this planet. So I would say, yes, we are using ourselves up if we're not in alignment with our lives, if we're not living that life. Yeah. (laughs) 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 So where's the harmony? Where's the peace? Where's the bliss? Where's the gratitude of life? How about the gratitude for life? Yes. We begin life with tons of this nascent energy at birth, tons of life force. And then throughout life, we use ourselves up and then we die mostly from lack of more energy. And we're unable to sustain our energy longer than like, you know, on a for good life, a hundred years. And that's usually a best case scenario. I think that the oldest person was just 110 um, who I think there's, I don't know, maybe still alive, just past 100. So that's pretty, we're like, wow. 110, oh boy. I know. But the, you know, the Chinese philosophers have for thousands of years obsessed with this idea of longevity because they believed if you could live to be at least 100 years old or so, you could potentially figure out how to live longer with all that wisdom of 100 years. Okay, so maybe that is the L word. (laughs) <laughs> the longevity. longevity. So we have the L word, we and have the, the I, I word. word, and we have the F word. <laughs> okay, so all right, so let's how we go. How do we go from that from longevity to immortality? Well, that's you know where the idea of immortality came from. This pursuit of longevity, and then the question being, can you actually begin to engender your own life? Can you be a sustainable? being of your, a of your own. Yeah. Can you nourish your own life in a way that creates more energy and add to the energy that you were born with instead of just depleting it? Wow. Let's do that. Yes. I think of it as like, how can we make deposits into the bank of life force instead of constant withdrawals? Yeah. You don't want to get that overdrawn. <laughs> dum, dum. <laughs> no. Not that I've ever gotten that. <laughs> <laughs> and no bankruptcy, please. You know, that's... You have a fee of $25. Yeah. yeah game over. <laughs> so we've talked talked about this. Why do you want to live to be 100 years or 200 years? Or, you know, most of us probably don't even think about it or want it. But, you know, if you're miserable now in this life, time in this span of life currently, then you certainly probably don't want to live to be 100 years old because it's only going to get worse. Yeah. Sometimes when I'm with a a client in a coaching session and I'd be like, okay, you're 60 years old. You're not really, what if this is the halfway point and not the end of the line? What if you're just going to be, okay, now let's go another 60 years. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, what if we shifted the perspective and you were just in the middle even then, 120. It, I mean, it could even be on and on, but it's it like, changes everything. It changes the perspective. It's that paradigm shift. It's like it's like having a self-propelling engine inside you that needs no outside energy source, something that creates your own energy from within within yourself. That would be something that could take you to that kind of lifespan. Yeah, we're not talking about the spark from the uh, Transformers. Yes. <laughs> well, maybe. maybe. I mean, transformation. The spark of life. This is the podcast of transformation. That's right. All right. That's right. So if you could do that, if you could start having this self-propelling energy force inside you, then you could survive beyond your normal lifespan. You could essentially become what the alchemists believe is immortal. So what is... So the, okay. So the, who was the bumblebee transformer of the alchemists? <laughs> I don't know. Tell that was what, my favorite one. Was that your favorite that one? That was the yellow one. It transformed. Okay, we're talking about transformation. Spark of life. Hey, I've never really looked at the transformers. Well, actually, there level. is an answer to that. The yellow emperor. There you go. The famous yellow emperor who was constantly in pursuit of immortality. Wow. So many of the famous... Who uh, knew? Yeah, the classics. The famous classics were all conversations with the yellow emperor. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty good. All right. I'm not going to go down the transformers again. I'm sorry. I just couldn't get Bumblebee out of my mind. Yes. So, okay. So this is what many of the alchemists were pursuing. And some people like to call it the philosopher's stone. Some people call it- J.K. Rawlings. Yes. <laughs> right. And some people called it the elixir of life. Actually, not just her. Yes. Not Nicholas just her. Nicholas Flamel. Yes. And it has been written about. It's it's in pop culture. It's pop culture to death. You know, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> no, I think that is pun intended. <laughs> oh, yes. Pun intended. <laughs> 
Uh, so, okay. So it's believed that a number of people were able to actually achieve immortality. So Gohong was believed to have become immortal and was one of the first in, you know, of the legend. And the legend is that he had his, he and his wife, Bao Gu, who were both alchemists, disappeared right in front of his students' eyes and they left their clothes and shoes in a heap. I say they because they never talk about the wife. <laughs> right. You know, the wife. Every and, good alchemist has a good wife. Right? And we actually went to Gahung's uh, mountain, Jay and I, and we learned all about Baogu. And she, she was, was a badass, she was cool dude badass. woman there. Yeah. I guess she, I can't say cool dude woman. <laughs> she was just really with it. <laughs> and so we were sure she was a part of it. And, the you know, the legend is that they just transformed right right then and there, evaporated into thin air and became these butterflies. So, so transcend into they, another dimension. Yeah, they transcended right? to that? this other dimension. And so when we traveled there, when we went to the mountain, you know, we actually stood in front of the cave of Gohong and these two butterflies came out. And guess what? They were white and black. I and know, it was really wild. It was like are those trained butterflies? But they were not. <laughs> they were they were on uh, payroll. Payroll. <laughs> at the mountain. Cute butterflies. <laughs> no, it was really surreal yeah, to Dis- see it. Disney couldn't have done it better. No. <laughs> no. And there was no music. I was looking for the music, like listening, like, where's the dramatic music? And the special effects. <laughs> yeah, but no, it was really uh, quite amazing. And to see this mountain, which is not a big popular attraction, it's not in the mountains in China. This is like, you know, the minor mountain, the minor mountain. And so and then we'd be like going through it and it was really cool. And he picked that mountain because the minerals in the water were of that supposed mountain. to support longevity. Yeah. And there are only a few places in the world where this actually was happening. So he was totally correct. Yes. So go and we did drink the water there and got yelled at. Yes, yes. <laughs> because Scolded. the water was supposed to be really special. So Gohung is or was, you know, I'm not sure, one of the most famous immortals. But after him, there was Sun Simiao and then the eight immortals. Right. And so there's this this long list of people who had pursued this. Now, did they all die or did they transition or tr- transcend to another physical realm or did they just master invisibility um, or did they have an invisibility cloak? Again, Talking Harry about Potter. Potter. Harry Potter. Or did they just learn how to master time and space and be able to time travel to different places and times? Even here in the West, there are legends of Im- immortals who can transcend time and space. Yes, there's Dr. John Dee in England and Nicholas Fumel in France, as well as St. Germain and many so more. Many more yeah. yeah, while all these legends are interesting, many of them end in the disappearance or the death, the quote unquote death, air quotes, air quotes of the person. So the question is, is immortality real? I guess we don't have an answer for that. We don't have an answer for that. We like to imagine that it's real. Yes, because if you imagine it's real, it really plays with your mind. And guess what? We're we're doing the revolution of our minds, right? The revolution of our belief systems. So for us, what we do know is that the concept of immortality is one of those things that helps challenge our belief systems. It's building upon the last episode, you know, where we talked about tackling our fear of death. It's embracing the idea that our own immortality is one of the ways we can face death without fear. Okay, well, that's burying the lead a little bit. We could have led with that right in the beginning. <laughs> that's the die before dying theory. We talked about exactly. that before. So instead of living and waiting until you die, in you theory. live in the moment. Yes. Because that's all we have is this one moment. Yes. Anyone out there who studies the quantum physics, this is the one moment, the one thing that we have. So let's try to understand this concept a little more. You know, it's simply complicated or complicatedly simple, whichever you prefer, because even if you don't believe in physical immortality, you might embrace the spiritual concept that we do continue in some non-physical form after death. And if that continuation, you know, like, you know, when you get um, reincarnated is a pleasant idea for you because... Well, you're not going to go to hell. Eat your devil toothpicks. Yes, because that's also technically an idea of immortality, but not a very nice one. So then death doesn't have to be scary. But even if you allow your mind to let go of its belief that we are all on a steady march to death, this onward, ongoing walk toward total destruction. Drudgery, trudging along. Yes, yeah. and toward, to annihilation in the end. If you start to entertain the idea that we could live well beyond our 100-year death sentence, the thoughts that cause so many of us such terror, if we could let that go 
And imagine what life would be like if we could live to be well over 100 years old, perhaps 150, 200, 600 years old. You have to be able to live right now. Yes, exactly. So could you imagine that you might be able to embrace death with open arms? Come here, big Grim Reaper. I'm going to give you a hug. BFF. Let's hug it out, right? (laughs) After living that much life every moment of every day. You might enjoy a change at that point. You might be welcome death because you've lived so long. You've lived such a good life. Yeah. It's a great thought. I like it. Let's go with a bigger question. Yes. Why would you want to live forever? Exactly. Why? I'm asking you that. I'm asking you that. I'm asking you that. All right. Well, maybe, you know, <laughs> we we might want to try something new after living so many years. So, you know, if so, why are so many of us afraid of death? Like, are we may- talking about like juggling or like poetry or like what yeah. are we new are you talking about? Well, if you've been an accountant your whole life, you know, you can die before you die and decide you're going to be an artist for the rest of your life. Start jumping into improv classes and yeah. doing art painting, whatever you want. That's right. right. Nurture that creativity if you always wanted to. Right. But if you don't, if you're like, huh, no, I'm kind of done. Maybe living forever isn't really what you want. Yeah. So we have to start asking yourself deeper questions. I'm not going to say better questions, but how about deeper questions this week about who you are and what do you want in this lifetime? We just want to start having a conversation, having you have a conversation with yourself to start asking yourself these questions. And breaking down those rigid belief systems. Yes. So the question is, can you open your mind to living life like there is no end to it? Again, you buried the lead there, Lita. Because that is like the beginning. We could open with that. (laughs) Can you open your mind to living life without without thinking there is no end to it? Pod 82. (laughs) It's kind of the opposite of that concept of life every day, like living life like it's your last day on earth. A lot of people like that idea because they they're gonna live today like it there's the their end is tonight. So they you gotta get all that all of it out. You know, you gotta do everything. So but this is about giving yourself an abundance of time and energy, not a limited t- amount of time and energy. Well, I guess that comes into the factor of time. Yes. Right. If you're living every day, like it's your last day concept, or the letting go and you wake up every day, time comes into play. So how does that work? The scenario of living like you're like you're immortal. Guess what? You have unlimited on time amount of time. Right. Time is now your friend, not your enemy. It's the most abundant resource you have if you're immortal. And it's the only thing that we actually have. That we can control a little bit. Yeah. Or maybe we can't control it. I don't know. Right. So if you entertain the idea that you have so much time, could you slow down a bit and savor life? And not rush right into the next thing and the next and the next. Yeah, trying to jam and turducken so many experiences in one tiny lifetime. Oh, wait, you got to explain turducken again. Turducken is the it's turkey kind of shoved into the chicken, shoved into the duck. For it's someone a real who, thing. For so, yeah, people do this. They shove a duck. Oh, I don't know why they're shoving anything into all the birds. But I know. It's a turducken. Look it up. Google yeah. it. Anyway, just Google it. So it's trying to jam so many experiences into one lifetime. Yeah, so don't Google, don't turducken. <laughs> you can Google it. Don't turducken your life. Yes. Slow down. Yes. Ex- Floor, have fun. It's like the old song, song from the 60s. Slow down, you move too fast. You got to make the morning last now. There's no turducking in that song. No, no. you got to kicking down the cobblestones. Do to do and feeling, feeling groovy. groovy. That's all I know. Feeling groovy. <laughs> so I want to feel groovy. You know, our lives are so fast paced. We have to go away to slow down. It's kind of sad. Like we literally can't slow down in our own lives. Oh, you have to go into an off grid cabin on a mountain on the other side where there is no wor- world. Yes. Unplug. You know, leave your your phone in the car. No computers. I don't know. Is it even possible? Yes. We might be past that portal, but maybe, I mean, think about it. Gahong and Bagu had a mountain. They they left society with their bunch of merry little friends and they did their thing. Okay, Lita, we're going to talk a little bit more of Gahong and Sun Sen Meow, but wait, you know, let's go back just a little bit. So according to the ancient alchemists, let's go back to the beginning of this theory so we can understand the mindset as best as we can, which probably is not going to happen. We're modern, but... They really believe that immortality or in immortality as a way of life. Think about that. Immortality as a way of life. Yeah, they they thought it was a real thing. And, you know, it sounds complicated. So you have to find a way, you know, in order to achieve it, literally achieve it, 
physical immortality. How do you do it? You have to find a way to get back to your source energy, the source of all energy, so you can become your own nuclear reactor, I in essence. Gahong and Baogu and their group, they were obsessed with this idea. They wanted to do it through chemicals, mineral stones, that's a stone medicine, uh, doing uh, creating elixirs of minerals and different things to find a kind of like a magical potion, air quotes, that would change their physical makeup to create that engine, that renewable energy source, so exactly. to speak. Exactly. Yes. And later... Which was dangerous. Yes. Subsequent people said, hey, this isn't so cool. Like you can literally die trying to be immortal. Kind of ironic, you know. So later the alchemists, you know, like Sun Si Miao, began to believe that it was something you created through meditation and self-cultivation, you know, more like the Buddhist idea of enlightenment. So you can cultivate yourself into this source energy of the universe. So basically you're in gendering yourself. You birth yourself every day. You become what they call an immortal fetus. That's what they called it. It's a rebirthing of yourself. And that's what alchemy is ultimately about. And that goes to your die before you die. The, you yeah. know, what we really should have called this episode, die before you die, because it it is about that. So another The term, other James Bond title that didn't make it yet. <laughs> yes. It's coming. It's, it's coming. coming. So another term they use is that if you accomplish this, you can become a realized human being like Lao Tzu. The realized beings were the sages that kind of overcome life. These enlightened beings, they had realizations of deep understanding of the ways of the universe. Whether they were immortal or not, that remains to be seen. But they understood the inner workings of the universe and of the Tao. So one of the things that we've learned now that we've been contemplating these ideas for a long while, which is really a short time compared to eternity, a blink, a blink. less than a blink. <laughs> one of the things we've learned is that the importance of immortality isn't about living forever. It's about the state of mind of not living to die. It's about embracing the effervescence of your life, attempting to get back to the source of who you are, your spirit, and encountering that true essence deeply. And that is the Taoist form of enlightenment. It can't be done from the belief that death is imminent, that our demise is imminent. It has to be done from the place of our rebirth, our die before you die so that you can rise above yourself. That was really intense. I love it. Fantastic. That is all you need to know right there is that <laughs> just hit rewind on that and listen to it again. Because, you know, we're really making this sound a little simple and it's not. It's complicated. People dedicated their lives or multiple lives to mm -hmm. trying Definitely. to figure this out. So we're just talking about some theories and shifting your thoughts and your you know, what ifs? It's shaking you up, shaking up the way we see ourselves and challenging, again, our inherent belief systems. And not to say that there anything's wrong with the current belief systems, but to be open, opening ourselves up to all possibilities. What if? All possibilities, what if, right? right? What if, and by the way, there's a what if t-shirt on our new merch store on the website. Let us know. Yeah, send us a question or do something and we'll get you one of those what if t-shirts. Yes. And yes, remember. Or we, you could always support us. So we yes. Keep, keep doing this. We've always had it in the podcast in previous seasons that if you send us a question, we will send you a t-shirt. So go ahead and send us questions to Lita at inspiredactionpodcast.com or Jay at inspiredactionpodcast.com. There we go. So back to the topic. If we allow our minds to embrace all possibilities, even the crazy possibility of being immortal, then we can explore other realms of thought that we may be rejecting because they seem silly. So even if they are silly, they allow our minds to be more flexible. And as a result, our lives can be less habitual. Now that brings on to the next Boom. thing, habits, <laughs> right. bad habits, good habits, yes. no right, no wrong, no good, no bad, but we have habits and they kind of block us in our ability to embrace life like the child, like the yes. child, like mine. So I think that how do we talk about habits as far as the habits we want, the habits we don't want? Can we live a habit, habit free, not hobbit free? <laughs> Not down in the Shire there. Have it free life. What would that look like? Well, the first thing is, why would you care? Like, if if you know this one fact, this one fact that blows my mind, that the source, the source of aging, the reason we look like we're getting older is because we have too many habits. Habits make us age. 
Well, so we have to kick those habits. We have to kick them. Remember the flying nun when she had that habit and she was like running around with the habit? That's a habit too, right? (laughs) That's a different kind of habit. So we have a habit and hobbit. Well, Well, now we're talking about habits. Alchemists are supposed to fly. So she was probably an alchemist. That's right. All right. So we don't really want habits. Sally Field. I really did like her. Yes, Yes, I did. So we don't really want habits because if, if we really want to be free, if we want to embrace our longevity, the habits are the thing in things in the way. So this is the very, you know, core essence of what we're trying to do when you let go at the end of the day. Yeah. So again, work that into your self-cultivation, that letting go, that sitting and forgetting meditation. It just helps you come into the next day. It's like, well, like you can do it again. Like a child. Chi- children do not have habits. No. They have to develop habits. We say that like it's a good thing. Develop a habit to do blah, 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 blah. And it's like... We got to undo that. Yeah, we got to undo that. So, you know, we have to un- we have to learn to explore the universe in non-predictable ways. Habits are predictable. Yes. And what it, what happens when what, hap, what happens what happens when we have habits? What if the hobbits have habits? Yes, if the hobbits have habits. Well, the hobbits, okay, let's start over. <laughs> the formation of our habits creates our identities. We start to get identities based on these habits, these rigid lives. They start to create these identities and that's the path of aging. So so, you know, that's right, I have why... a question. Yes. How many habits would a hobbit have if a hobbit had habits? <laughs> a lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. Because they lived really long, remember? They lived in Actually, Hobbiton. they probably didn't have many because they, they lived long, they long lived lives. They lived really long lives. Really long times. They're, and they were like children. That's right. Yes. And so, they drank a lot and they smoked a little weed and they yes. did a lot of fun things and they loved fireworks. Yes. So children are the are the best mindset. So get to- your hobbit on when you're trying to get rid of your habits. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so children are constantly exploring their universe in non-predictable ways, non-habitual ways. And in alchemy, we're trying to return to the state of the child. All the big philosophers in, chi- in China have the words at the end, like Lao Tzu, which is Lao Tzu, Zhuangzi, Z is a seed, Z-I, it means seed, and it's the beginning of something, and it's a child. So it's about seeing the world as magical as a child does. Yeah, so when we wrote about alchemy in our book, Through the Mystery Gate, stage four of alchemy is being like a child. Yes, and there are nine stages of alchemy in total, but before we get to the childlike stage, stage four, we may have a lot of baggage to unload because we're adults. And this lifetime, you know, we accumulate a lot of baggage or maybe we inherited it from our ancestors, our parents, our grandparents. And the, or how about we inherited it through the influence of of our past lives on sure. this lifetime. That's why it's number four, not number one. Yes. Yeah, so we, we have these earlier stages. Yeah. So you have a lot of stuff to kind of get off your back before you can be a child again. So if you're thinking, wow, this is overwhelming and a lot, guess what? We're going to take you on this alchemical journey. We have so much more to talk about. This podcast will continue to introduce you to so many topics, but we have a book as well, Through the Mystery Gate, which just came out. We have the Alchemy Learning Center where you can dive into some classes, learn about the five elements, nine palaces, and alchemy. And and alchemy, yes. Yes. (laughs) And all these different things. So we have a little community that we're forming. So if you're if you're like, hey, this really sounds interesting, come check it out. We're we're here and Yeah. Where we would like to talk to about more. So yes, and so we're going to take each podcast in this season and just really, you know, gently lead you through a bunch of these topics that we do cover in the book. But it's just so much more fun to, fun to share them and talk to the talk to you all about yeah, them. Yeah, we do Wu Wei, 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 Wei Wednesdays. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that because each week we're going to have a further discussion of the topic of the podcast on Wednesday nights. Eastern time. So, so for those, this week, it's going to be Hobbits and Habits. Yes. So yes, we're going to talk about Hobbits and Habits. So for those of you in um, other time zones, like in Europe, you know, we record the we podcast. We have a lot of people into us in Europe. Yes. Yeah, so we, re- we record, love it. Big we, hugs out. Yes. Yeah, so in Alchemy Learning Center, there are many, many recordings of our Wait, past. do we have anyone from New Zealand? Yes, we have We're tons from New lots Zealand. Of Hobbit oh, love. right. Hobbit yeah. love to everyone in New Zealand. And um, thank you so much for yes. mentioning that. Yes, of course, we have a great audience They're there. probably like, enough with the Hobbits. Okay, that's all <laughs> we hear all day. So Where do we go? Are the Hobbits, Hobbits real? Or? <laughs> yes, they're real, just so you know. Spoiler. Okay. They're so, real. <laughs> so... 
The Wu Wei Wednesdays, our live events are recorded. They're available in the Alchemy Learning Center for members. So go ahead and check it out. Yes. If you want to know more about your five elements, you can also send us a video of you walking. And we often review them on Wednesday nights. Yeah, so please keep them clean. (laughs) For all the walks, close on, okay? Close on. It's not an option. Um, It's the only option. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. I hope you can yes, join us. Yes, that was a really intense. You're going to have to listen to it again. Yes. Cut through all the silliness, but hey. it's got a really a lot of cool, cool things in there. Hey, we can say Wu Wei Wednesdays like the backstage pass. How wow. about that? To get into immortality. <laughs> yes, there you go. <laughs> it's your backstage. It's your groupie pass to come on in and hang out with the immortals. Yes, there you go. Yes. All right. Well, all right. we hope you could join us. And thank you for listening. And next week, we'll be back with more inspiring conversations. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Inspired Action Podcast, and you've reached the end. Woohoo! Why not celebrate a little bit and click that subscribe button right there. We love having you with us on this journey and we want it to continue. You can also rate and review this podcast. And if you have already, thank you so much. We read all reviews and your reviews help other people find this podcast as well. You can also be a part of this podcast yourself by submitting a voice recording message and emailing it to us at Lita at InspiredActionPodcast.com or Jay at InspiredActionPodcast.com. And if you want, you can join our Facebook group or follow us on Instagram. Join us next week for another Inspired Action Conversation. And thank you for listening. Thanks for listening and remember to hug the dog. <laughs>